Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to share with you two types of uh, substitutions that will let us evaluate these integrals. These uh, substitutions, uh, called rationalizing substitutions, will let us transform these integrals into integrals of rational functions. Let's get started. Let's evaluate uh, this integral. If you have an integrand that contains a radical expression, nth root of uh, f of x, we may let this uh, radical expression to be our u. So in this uh, case, uh, let's make our u to be equal to the fourth root of x. And if this is our u, then raising both sides to four, we'll get there u raised to four equal to x. And this implies that four u cubed du is equal to dx. Therefore, we can write our integral as integral of four u cubed du over one plus u. So our integrand now is a rational function. And we may evaluate this integral by first dividing these two polynomials here. So we can do long division, or we can also do the following. So we can write 4u cubed as 4 times the quantity u cubed plus 1, and then minus 4. And since this is a sum of two cubes, we can factor this to u plus 1 times this trinomial, u squared minus u plus 1. Therefore, if we're going to divide both sides by u plus 1, we'll be able to get 4 times the quantity u squared minus u plus 1, and then minus 4 over 1 plus u. So this integral here can now be written as uh, factoring out the 4 from this uh, difference here. So that is 4 times the integral of this expression du. And we can now use our basic integration formulas to evaluate this integral. And we'll get here antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3, and then times 4. Antiderivative of u is equal to u squared over 2, and then times 4. Antiderivative of 1 is u times 4. And then antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus u is equal to ln of absolute value of 1 plus u, and then plus c. And we can write our substitution equation to put back the u in terms of x, and we'll get the following expression. So this is the value of this indefinite integral. Let's move to the second integral. So for this second integral, what substitution can we use in order to get rid of these radical expressions? So in this case, we'll be able to get rid of this square root and cube root if the power of the radicand is a multiple of both 2 and 3. And the least common multiple of 2 and 3 is actually equal to 6. So we can use the substitution t equal to u raised to 6. Again, this power of u here is actually the least common multiple of 2 and 3. So if we make this substitution, we'll be able to get rid of this square root and cube root. So if we let t to be equal to u raised to 6, then our dt is equal to 6u raised to 5 du. Therefore, we can now write our integral as integral of 6u raised to 5 du over u cubed plus u squared. So this square root of t becomes square root of u raised to 6, which is equal to u cubed. And this uh, cube root of t is cube root of uh, u raised to 6, which is equal to u squared. And as we can see from this substitution, we were able to write our integrand into a rational function. Let's now evaluate this uh, integral here. So first, we see a common factor u squared in both the numerator and denominator. So we can factor that out. And uh, canceling the common factor, we'll get here integral of 6u cubed over u plus 1 du. And uh, same as what we did in the previous problem, we can write this expression here, u cubed over u plus 1, as this expression. And uh, this will give us uh, 2u cubed minus uh, 3u squared plus 6u minus 6 ln of absolute value of u plus 1 plus c. And using this substitution equation, we'll be able to write our answer in terms of t as 2 square root of t minus 3 cube root of t plus 6 times 6 root of t minus 6 ln of 6 root of t plus 1 
So we get rid of the absolute value because this is always uh, greater than or equal to 1 and then plus the arbitrary constant c. Let's look at the next integral. For this integral, we can have the substitution u equal to square root of 4 minus e to the x. Now let's uh, find an expression for dx in terms of u and du. So if we square both sides of this equation, we'll get here u squared equal to 4 minus e to the x. So this will give us 2u du equal to negative e to the x dx. And how do we write this negative e to the x in terms of u? So from this second equation here, we'll get u squared minus 4 equal to negative e to the x. Therefore, we can write this expression here as the quantity u squared minus 4 times dx. And we'll get here dx is equal to 2u du over u squared minus 4. Therefore, we can now write this integral as integral of u times 2u du over u squared minus 4. And we can simplify our integrand to 2u squared over u squared minus 4. So we can do long division here, or we can do the following. 2 times the quantity u squared minus 4, and then plus 8, all over u squared minus 4. And uh, clearly from this, if we write this as sum of two fractions, we'll get 2 plus 8 over u squared minus 4. And here we can already find an antiderivative of 2, so that is uh, 2u. And integral of this one can be written as 8 times integral of this expression here. So just factor out the denominator and then du. And applying partial fraction decomposition to this rational function, we'll get here 1 fourth over u minus 2 plus negative 1 fourth over u plus 2. And this integral here will give us 2 times the quantity L of absolute value of u minus 2 minus ln of absolute value of u plus 2 and then plus c. So just uh, factor out the common factor 1 fourth here and multiply it to 8. That will give us positive 2. And then antiderivative of 1 over x minus 2 is ln of absolute value of u minus 2. And antiderivative of 1 over u plus 2 is equal to ln of absolute value of u plus 2. And here we can use a property of ln to write this difference here as ln of this quotient here. And because our u is equal to square root of 4 minus e to the x, so we can write our final answer as this expression. Let's now move to our last integral. For this last integral, we're going to use what we call uh, Weierstrass substitution or tangent half angle substitution. And this kind of uh, substitution will convert rational functions of trigonometric functions, just like this, into ordinary rational function. So if you're not familiar with this Weierstrass substitution, let me derive the substitutions for you. This is also called tangent half-angle substitution because we're going to represent uh, the tangent of the half-angle, so tangent of uh, theta over 2, to be t. Of course, you can use u or x if you want. And the theta here is between negative pi and pi. So with this substitution, we have the associated right triangle, which is given by this. So tangent of theta over 2 is t over 1. So that is t over 1. And by Pythagorean formula, we'll get the hypotenuse, which is square root of 1 plus t squared. So from here, we'll get cosine of theta over 2, which is the reciprocal of secant theta over 2. And because our theta is here, we are sure that the secant is always greater than 0. So this is greater than 0. So we can write this secant of theta over 2 as square root of 1 plus tangent squared of theta over 2. And because tangent of theta over 2 is equal to t, so we can write cosine of theta over 2 as 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. Now, what is sine of theta over 2? So sine of theta over 2 can be written as tangent of theta over 2 times cosine of theta over 2. So this first factor here is just equal to t. 
the second factor is equal to this one, so we'll get that t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And now let us uh, compute for sine theta and cosine theta using double angle identities. So using the double angle identity for sine, we have sine theta is equal to 2 times sine of theta over 2 cosine of theta over 2. So that is 2 times the product of this. So we'll get here 2t over 1 plus t squared. And then using a double angle identity for cosine, we'll get cosine theta equal to this difference. So this is the difference of this quantity squared minus this quantity squared. So that will give us this expression. So here, we already found the substitutions for sine theta and cosine theta. Now, what is our d theta? So from our substitution equation, t equal to tangent of theta over 2. So we'll get here 2 tangent inverse t is equal to theta. So just take the tangent inverse of both sides and then multiply both sides by 2 to get this equation here. And this equation here will give us 2 over 1 plus t squared dt equal to d theta. So this kind of substitution is also called Weierstrass substitution. And if we're going to make this substitution to this integral here, we'll get the following integral. And this uh, integrand here can be simplified to 2 over 60 minus 4 times the quantity 1 minus t squared. And then canceling the common factor 2 between the numerator and denominator, we'll get here 1 over 3t minus 2 times the quantity 1 minus t squared. And removing the grouping symbols here, we'll get 2t squared plus 3t minus 2. So is this... Uh, denominator factorable? The answer is yes. And the factors are 2t minus 1 and t plus 2. So we can now apply partial fraction decomposition to our integrand and we'll get here 2 over 5 over 2t minus 1 plus negative 1 over 5 over t plus 2. So you can apply the cover-up technique to easily find these numerators. So now an antiderivative of this is just equal to 1 over 5 times ln of absolute value of 2t minus 1. And then antiderivative of this is negative 1 over 5 ln of absolute value of t plus 2. And then don't forget the arbitrary constant c. So applying property of ln, we can write this difference here as 1 over 5 times ln of this quotient. And because our t is equal to tangent of theta over 2, we can write our answer as this expression. So this is the value of our integral. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.